Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at today's bell rock. So our job today was to find a power series that represents the inverse tangent of x. And right now, we don't know what the inverse tangent of x would look like um, as a series on its own, but we do know something about derivatives, right? We know that the derivative of inverse tangent of x looks similar to our general form for a power series, right? From our geometric series investigation, gosh, a week and a half ago. So let's go ahead and take a look, not at uh, y equals inverse tangent of x, but rather at y prime, the derivative of inverse tangent of x. What does that look like symbolically? Tyler? Uh, y prime equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. And so we're familiar with the derivative of inverse tangent of x, and this looks close to right our general power series representation. So like this, oh, rewrite it so that it was 1 over 1 minus something, right? Then that something is the r in my general series, that ratio. And so how could I rewrite it so that this is 1 over 1 minus something? Well, what would my something have to be so that we were equivalent to the derivative of inverse tangent? Danny? Uh, negative x squared. Yeah, negative x squared. We had right, our something, our r, our geometric ratio, as negative x squared. Then we could see we could represent this, the derivative of y, right, as a power series. And so what would this look like as a power series? Well, this representation would actually be equal to, right? It would be equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, and it looks like, right, my regular form would be x to the n, right? My regular form would be x to the n, except I didn't have plain Jane x here. I had negative x squared. And so when I go to write this, I will have negative x squared as my ratio r. Yes? Who got this far? Did you guys get this far? Okay, great. Now typically we won't see our final answer like this, right? Typically we'd see that negative taken out as a negative 1 all to the end and then x to the, and we'd apply our exponent rules. So typically you'll see your, um, your power series representation then as Let's see, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n, that's probably how we'd see that. So raise your hand if you we were like that. You guys were like that? Oh, hey, great. We are on track. Loving it. All right, so we just found a power series representation for the derivative of inverse tangent. Well, our original task was to find a power series representation for the inverse tangent. So what do we have to do, Kobe? Um, find the power series for the antiderivative? Yeah, absolutely. So if we could, if we represented the derivative, right, with this series, couldn't we integrate that series representation and we'd be left with the representation of, right, our original y. So we're using our knowledge of calculus and derivatives, right, and antiderivatives now in the context of series and the representations for functions. So that's kind of cool. All right, so let's see if we can't go off the lab. Ready? Da -da 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 -da. And so I could expand this out, right, as its sum of terms, that's what a series is, and along with its, its generalized nth term, and then integrate term by term, right? After integrating term by term, I could generalize, right, that new series back in summation notation. But wouldn't it just be quicker? to use my antiderivative rule on my power series representation right now and save the trouble because it would just be translating into the expanded form, integrating, observing the pattern, and then rewriting back in the summation notation. Let's just stick with the summation notation. So we're, we're going to take a little shortcut here. Let's see. This negative 1 to the n is just a constant. It's going to stick around in my derivative rules and my antiderivative rules as a constant multiplier. So I'll go ahead and have the sum from 0 to infinity of, still have my negative 1 to the n, that's just a constant multiplier, but now I'll apply my antiderivative rules to x to the 2n. What overall rule will I use to integrate that? Tyler? Power rule. Pow, pow, power rule, power rule, where the antiderivative of x to the 2n is x to the, add 1 to the exponent, that is 2n plus 1, divided by the new exponent, that is 2n plus 1. 
Thus, we've generated a power series representation for y equals inverse tangent of x through our knowledge of calculus and derivatives. That's pretty cool. Now, we could certainly expand this out, and you'll have an opportunity to add this to your collection, yes, your family of different familiar function representations throughout the course of today's activity and later. I'm going to scoot it down just a touch for our PDF ability. And I'm dying to know. Raise your hand if you got this far. So anybody got to get this far? Can we go all the way in? Almost? So, good job. So, was it right here? Add one to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. Okay, cool. Constant? That's a little bugger. So that's just a constant multiplier. Don't have to add one to the exponent there. It's going to stick around in the party whether I'm differentiating or anti differentiating as a constant multiplier. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and I want to, before we pass this in, check the evens. So let's go ahead and pause the recording. Are you, no one? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and thank you for your help with your uh, OTL collection. Let's go ahead and take a look then at the follow-up to our generation of the uh, series to represent the inverse tangent of x. We were asked about the interval of convergence, and I also want to verify right our um, our series representation visually with the graph. Okay, and so let's go ahead and revisit that. How is it that we determine the interval of convergence? Well, we know that the interval of convergence for a geometric series, right, is when r, my ratio, absolute value of, is less than strictly 1. In this case, the easiest way to find that is by looking at my 1 over 1 minus r. It's just my r here, right, is the generalized power function with x in it. My r is negative x squared. And so if we can figure out when the absolute value of r is less than 1, that will determine the interval of convergence algebraic. So let's go ahead and do that. Normally, I set the absolute value of r less than 1 and solve. In this case, I've got the absolute value of negative x squared. Right? That's my ratio r. So I want to see when the absolute value of negative x squared is less than 1. Okay? So the derivative and the original function both have the same R value. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you asked. And so, when we differentiate or integrate, right at this stage, the interval of convergence is preserved. Okay. And so our interval of convergence then is going to carry over from one to the to the next at this stage. Now we're still going to have to have a discussion of the endpoints on my interval of convergence, but but we're going to save that for a later time. Right now, let's go ahead and see if we can't figure out what this is. And so I know that the absolute value of that negative 1 right, is just a positive 1 on 5. And I also know that the absolute value of x squared right, is just x in between negative 1 and 1 again. And so it looks to me like our interval of convergence is negative 1 to 1 at this stage without considering the endpoint. Did everybody else get that? All right, did you guys see that too? Okay, so let's go ahead and expand the first several terms in my series rep representation for inverse tangent of x. In other words, let's take the summation notation and expand out the first several. How do I do that? Well, I start with my start index value of n equals 0, plug it into my generalized term, and then start adding terms together. Let's do it. So negative 1 to the 0 is positive 1. x to the first over 1. So it looks like x is the first term in my expansion. Yes? Increment my counter index n by 1. And plug back in. Negative 1 to the first is negative. x to the 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. So I'm getting x cubed over 3. Increment my counter by 1. n equals 4. Negative 1 to the fourth is a positive now x to the 2 times 3. Wait, did I do 0, 1, 2, so 2, so 5. x to the 5th over 5. And we start to see the pattern here. These are going to be my odd integer exponents. These are going to be divided by odd integers. And so let's, what will my next term be here, Riley? x to the 7th over 7. Good. Awesome. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at inverse tangent in my regular y equals menu and the one, two, three, fourth, fourth partial sum on the same window. So everybody, let's go ahead and consider my function that we're trying to represent with the power series. That's inverse tangent of x. After checking our mode, we're in radian, so good to go. So we're going to say the inverse tangent of x in y1. And now we're going to enter the fourth partial sum, right, from its series representation. So what do I want to enter? I want to enter x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the seventh over 7. Oh boy, that's the pretty print. So there's nothing pretty about that. So, Riley, did I get that worked out? I think so. You're kind of in charge in that seat, in case you didn't know. So what would be an appropriate window? Well, algebraically, we've determined that our interval of convergence should be in between negative 1 and 1, right, without examining the endpoints at this stage. So I'm going to go ahead and go negative 1.5 to 1.5. And my y window, I'm going to go negative... 3 to 3. And I might not like this window, but we're going to try anyhow. And let's see. So here comes inverse tangent in the blue line style. And now comes the fourth partial sum. If we've done a good job, we should see them sharing, right, sharing in between negative 1 and 1, and by golly, by the fourth partial sum, and that one didn't take very long, it appears as though we already have a good, right, representation of my function. What would happen if I were to increase the number of terms in my power series expansion? That is, more, more terms in my partial sum. It's going to get closer and closer and closer, right? And now, we'll still have all kinds of problems once we get beyond my Right, x equals 1 to negative 1. We'll still have all kinds of problems out there. But gosh, it sure looks good right there, doesn't it? Okay, so I want to save that. That's pretty good. Does that help some, Tyler? Yeah. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what's going on today? Well, we've got an introduction to Taylor Series activity that I am super excited about. Courtney has had the, the luck to preview this a little bit ahead of time. Uh, and you do need your graphing calculator. So there are times, you, you do have to be able to graph with your window and add our partial sums together just like we did. So I'm glad Tyler asked to remind me about that. You'll also notice that our stamped eligible exercises include 2H and then followed by 2B. You might be wondering, why would you have 2H first and then 2B? Well, in my numbering as I were to work and rework this draft, I've got two number twos. And so the first number two at H, and then the second number two at B, I've already fixed it in my drive for next year and reordered it. But for now, we're stuck with 2H followed by 2B, 4, 5E, and 6B. I'm going to pause the recording. And then we're going to come back together and share our findings. Okay? We will have a discussion towards the end. We need about about 10 minutes and then we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure how long the activity will take, but I'm super excited about it. I want to give you as much time as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pause the recording for now.